Daniel, what is your take on the US COVID relief package, which uh, is still making its way through to the final stages before Joe Biden manages to sign it, we expect? Well, I think that the 1.9 trillion package that is uh, very likely to be approved uh, fulfills at least one purpose, which is to uh, lead the US economy into the full recovery. But it will not do a lot in terms of uh, uh, increasing potential growth or making the economy stronger fundamentally because it's mostly current spending. Most of it is uh, things that are patching the uh, current still weak state of the U.S. economy. But in any case, it is it is a positive sign that it's well targeted to small businesses and families so that the damage to the business fabric and to disposable income of this process of recovery uh, is uh, is is the smallest possible. Now, the, uh, the money will be going to uh, th those of middle and low income families. Um, is this a realistic way to, to jumpstart an economy? Well, it's not a, it, it's, it is certainly not a, a magic wand to kickstart the economy. I think, as I said, it's, it's basically a patch that allows at least the, 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 the economy to go through the process of recovery. The strong uh, level of recovery is still significantly behind the uh, 2019 level. So there's still a an elevated level of unemployment and there are still, uh, you know, a, a certain number of, of challenges in the U.S. economy. But it's also true that the U.S. economy is expected to recover all of its GDP uh, lost in 2020 by the first half of 2021. And therefore, what, it, what this stimulus package does is, is basically bridge the gap to the, the full recovery process. But it is definitely not something that is going to radically change the potential growth of the US economy. So like slapping on a Band-Aid whilst the wound heals. Exactly. I think that that is a very good, a very good analogy. If you think about it, what uh, what this and the previous two stimulus plans uh, basically did were uh, to try to prevent the economy from entering into a depression, and that has been achieved at a huge cost. This is very large level of deficit and obviously uh, significant monetary imbalances. But it is also true that if the U.S. economy recovers, as consensus expects, about 5.5 percent of GDP growth in 2021, then things can really start to uh, come back to normality very quickly. Now, one of the, the one of the severe problems we saw towards the end of last year, particularly, was the um, the number of people who were signing on as, as jobless in the United States. How has that changed, and will this stimulus have any effect on that? And uh, as uh, something adding on to that, the U.S. Secretary, Secretary, Treasury Secretary has predicted that by next year, um, full employment will return. What do you think about yeah. employment? Well, I think that obviously, you know, predicting full employment by 2022 is is being very optimistic. Right. Uh, the level of recovery of the U.S. job market is certainly very, very positive and much better than that of the Eurozone in particular, in which uh, you know, unemployment remains at 8.3 percent with uh, m almost 10 million people in furloughed jobs. In the United States, unemployment is at 6.3 percent. I think that what we are likely to see is, uh, is a slow path to the level of unemployment uh, that was a record low that we saw prior to COVID-19. So uh, this is the risk of uh, these massive stimulus plans, is that they patch 
uh, elements of the economy uh, for a period of time, but they leave behind a trail of debt that weakens productivity growth, weakens real wage growth, and makes it more difficult to recover the, all, of the, all of the jobs that have been lost. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. And I think that what um, uh, in the case of the U.S. economy, the improvement of the labor market is evident. It is significantly better than that of the Eurozone and similar economies. However, it is true that uh, it is slower and painfully slower compared to what uh, it should have been in uh, considering that we uh, we were in 2019 at uh, record levels of employment. Right. Now, at, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, 68 to 70 percent of Americans were supporting the, the progress of, uh, of this relief bill. Uh, and yet the Congress and Senate have pretty much split along bipartisan lines, in spite of the fact that Donald Trump, at the end of his presidency, was, was pushing for a large uh, payment to, uh, to Americans. Uh, is this, um, is it that politicians are, are trying to play a political game, or, or do they have a different calculus, do you think, in, in how to look forward? I think it's about, uh, it's not about the overall figure. Everybody would agree on, on the 1.9, 2 trillion uh, figure. I think that the problem is how you split it and how, uh, and, and the differences come from the, uh, the details, no? So basically, when we look at the stimulus plan of the Democratic Party, most of it uh, was including a large number of uh, mm, payments to programs uh, public service programs that had absolutely nothing to do with COVID-19 or the crisis, subsidies, etc. No? And what the Republicans wanted was something that would be more targeted to businesses and to, and to families. What they agreed upon was on the part of what would be going to families and, and businesses. And what uh, continues to be uh, a contentious issue was that um, the is that the Democratic Party, uh, at the same time as they were pushing for this stimulus plan, were also pushing to increase taxes. And I think that what has allowed the the stimulus bill to pass is that uh, the Democratic Party finally understood that it made absolutely no sense to spend 1.9 trillion in the economy and at the same time subtract from businesses a lot of money in uh, in taxes. No, so I think that you know th uh, uh, there is an important level of agreement, certainly a higher level of agreement than what we were seeing, for example, at the end of last year. But the differences were basically where those uh, funds would be targeted to. In the case of the Democratic Party, they were fundamentally looking to increase uh, the, uh, the, 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 the money that would go to programs that uh, at least uh, in headline had very little to do with anything to that that has happened in the pandemic crisis. Right, and of course, one of the things that uh, some are upset about was the uh, was raising that the minimum wage uh, yeah. hadn't been included in this. Although I was trying just trying to look for the the quote which I had from from Bernie Sanders saying that um, that, that this was the the best that uh, that had been achieved for the uh, for the working people. Is this uh, really the, the, the victory that uh, it's being billed as for Joe Biden? Well, not really. I think that the, you know, uh, the, the debates about the impact of minimum wage uh, are all over the world. And, but, but the reality is that uh, you, if what you want is wages to increase, what you need to do is to open the economy, leave businesses and allow businesses to invest more, hire more people. When the, uh, when the level of unemployment goes down, then wages rise faster, which is what we saw in 2018 and 2000. 17 but uh, and into 2019 now so i think that you know it's not about uh, the minimum wage it's about the minimum level of unemployment and yes. that's what the us economy needs to focus on
Well, thank you so much. I'm sure you have great strategies to put the U.S. back on its feet. David Lakai, thank you so much. Sorry, Daniel Lakai, I've done it again. Daniel Lakai, thank you so much for joining me today on The Edge. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, leave your comments below, and keep defending freedom. Thank you very much.